Okay, good evening YouTube and welcome to episode 26 of the FPL family. My name is Lee, this is Sam, and we are going to be reacting to game week 16 of the English Premier League, the EPL, and of course the Fantasy Premier League action throughout the whole of the game week. So, let's start with uh, your team. How did you get on? Okay, uh... 58 this week, which, okay. to be honest... 58 well, is pretty good, isn't it? Well, if you actually take a look at my team, it's, it's all thanks to three three men. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, so Otamendi, 11, Salah, 11, Kane, 24. Otamendi is every week killing me. He's killing me. Um, 11. Yeah, Jeez. 11, 11 for Otamendi, Salah, 11, and Kane, 24. And okay. he was obviously my captain this week again. Um, so I'm thrilled with them three. The rest of them can all pack their bag. Um <laughs> I'm I'm I am frustrated um, that I, I did the Ramsey to Silver swap this week. That that's a nightmare. Off. That's um, a nightmare. But you know, I look back at it and I still think I wouldn't have done anything any differently. Ramsey against Southampton, I thought that would be a better option than Silver against United. Um, and I also wanted to free up some money for my long term plans. You've got a plan to get Hazard, haven't you? A bit longer term. Yeah. So okay. um, I needed to do the transfer at some stage. It felt like the right week to do it. It's massively backfired, but hey, we are where we are. <laughs> and Ramsey happens to have picked up a little, oh, what no. lo looks like a little hamstring injury. So we don't know, I don't think yet, how long he's going to be out. But certainly there's something wrong with his hamstring. Hamstrings don't fix themselves in a few days, do they? Not for like Wednesday Tuesday, night. Wednesday. So, so Sa Silver might be coming back in again for a <laughs> so, oh, God, no. oh, so you're Ramsey to Silver? <laughs> Maybe, back. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, so I ended up a bit behind it on 55, which is all right. And again, Again, Kane captain, I'm really pleased that I did that. And as you know, I was really torn oh, really on the morning I... of the game week. Uh, so on Saturday morning, I was so close to moving that to Hazard. I was just I was looking at, you know, I, I even went back and I looked at the replay of the Hazard interview that he did after, who did he score well against? Was it Newcastle? Mm. Yeah, he did well against Newcastle. And he gave this interview where he's full of, you know, va va voom and smiles. <laughs> I was watching, I was just thinking, he just, he loves playing at the minute. He's, he's going to do great. And in the end, Chelsea, I mean, it was a, a poor performance actually from them, wasn't it? In the end, I thought West Ham were very, very good and we'll come to it in a minute. But I thought Chelsea weren't that great. So in the end, stuck the or left the armband on Kane, having had it on him all week. And again, that was another thing that I factored. I thought if I change at the last minute and Kane scores, you can't make I'm changes on Saturday morning, you can't. Yeah, so I didn't in the end. I kept it on Kane. Very happy to do that. Um, Norton came in, got me seven. Salah, obviously, but I think most people have got him by now. So he got double figures mm. again. I think 11, wasn't it? 11. 11. Yeah. And then the rest of my team is kind of just like littered with twos and ones and zeros. So again, I'm, I was kind of heavily reliant on a few players to do well. And in the end, I think the difference between you and I was pretty much Norton seven versus Otamendi's 11. It was. So it was about I mean, about I just right. had some frustrating players this week. The likes of Firmino not starting. That annoyed me. Um, You're going to keep though, because presumably he's going to play now against at home to West Brom. I'm certainly keeping him for West Brom. Yeah, game, I certainly. think you have to now. Um, yeah. I, I was annoyed with Alonso yet again. Um, got oh, we'll come to him in a minute because there's a, a lot of people looking to ship him on despite Chelsea's really good fixtures. But we'll come wow. to that in a sec. Okay. All right. Well, should we start with our review of the game week then? Yeah. So we've got. So again, we've got the fixtures coming thick and fast, haven't we? And this yeah. is a, a, obviously going to be a theme throughout December. You know, loads and loads of FPL going on. Um, I think what we're going to do in this video, let's do the reaction to the game week we've just had, including the derbies that we've just watched. Um, and then let's talk, I think briefly, probably at the end of the video, about how we are, or how our teams are looking for the next game week. Some of the, the transfers you might be considering. We'll do jammy picks, top points pick. And we'll try and do that in like five minutes right at the end. Rather than go through all the fixtures, otherwise this is like an hour and a half, isn't it? So you know, we did it quite well last time. It, it was, yeah, it long. wasn't too bad, wasn't we it? Did it too 58 bad. 58 minutes, didn't we, last time? It wasn't, it wasn't too, too bad. bad. Go on and crack on with the fixtures from uh, this right, game well, week then. What did uh, what do you want to go first? Um, well, I, I kind of feel like we should go backwards and we should start with today, really, with the two derbies. Um, just, you know, in terms of fancy points, I think. It's still a bit raw for me, but yeah, go on. Well, let's start with... with, <laughs> with in complete reverse then. Let's start with United and City. Because um, I think in terms of fantasy points, points that's where a lot of people's money is spent if you like um so interesting again today nothing for Lukaku not looking anywhere He's, near he looks really off it doesn't he and actually he had a, a really good chance that Edison pulled off a couple of it's like a double of, save wasn't it Edison yeah off his face and then a worldie afterwards yeah and actually the one that hit his face first I don't think he knew much about it but the second save was <laughs> no. fantastic but you know 
talk about Edison, but Lukaku, um, you know, he, he should have netted that, to be honest. And, and then I think that would have been 2-2 at the time, so they maybe get a point out of the Sent game. Sent one flying over the crossbar by a long way when yeah, he should have done a lot just, better. Was... Something's not right. No. And given that Manchester United's fixtures from now on, I mean, I was looking at the ticker, um, where is it? Let's have a quick look. It's funny with United, right? Because like you're, you're going to talk about the fixtures in a minute, but I'm looking at their team thinking, you know, really... I've got Jones, um, he was on the bench again, or back on the bench today, so I'm hopeful that for the midweek games he'll be back playing I, again. I hope so, I hope, um, see, I hope Mourinho sees him as first choice, otherwise that's yet another defensive transfer I've got to think about, because I've already got to think about Elliot and Daniels, but you know we'll come to all that in a sec. Yeah, um, but I, you know, I'm looking at it thinking, you know, potentially do I want to double up with United at the back, because their fixtures are nice, yes maybe. Yeah, maybe. But I'm not looking at any of their forward options thinking they're a must in my team. But there's got to be goals in this, right? So Bournemouth at home, West Brom away, Leicester away, Burnley at home, Southampton at home. I, it, you know, it doesn't get much more green than that on the ticket. No, and if you've got, a, you know, you've got Harry Kane, um, as I, you know, as I've discussed on the last vlog that we did, I said about keeping him for the game you've just played and also for Brighton next game week. And then from game week 18, Spurs fixtures kind of take a little bit of a dip because you've got, I think, Burnley away as a game against City and then he's got a blank. So maybe for that three-game week period, there could be a nice easy swap from Kane to Lukaku and then back again for 22. I don't know. I'm kind of just, that's maybe in my head what I'm thinking. But right now, I would really struggle to do that because well, Kane's I, just coming off a great game week and Lukaku looks to be honest, like you wouldn't touch him, right? No, absolutely. And I think if I was looking at if I was looking at any United forward, I'd probably be thinking more about Rashford than I would Lukaku at the moment. The only thing in the back of my mind is that clearly Pogba comes back from his ban. And is that... Next game week, or maybe there's one more no, game and then he comes back. I think it must be one more. Maybe he's after. done two games of his three now. So clearly, they are a different side when Pogba plays. Mm. It changes the dynamic. Maybe that makes Lukaku more of an option. Okay. But if Pogba comes back, the one you're looking at is probably Pogba. You're probably not going to look at Lukaku right now. So there's a lot that's going to happen, I think, with United over the next week or so because clearly he's going to finish that ban on Tuesday, Wednesday. He's going to be back for the following game week where they go to West Brom. And right now, you want to be playing West Brom because West Brom look pretty bad. Yeah. So I think you've got to be looking at having them on the radar, if you like. And we won't do a radar as part of this video, but let's have oh, a virtual radar. No radar. Well, so we would normally do the radar when we'll we do We'll do a little our... radar at the end, and I'll just give a little list of people that I want to watch for next week. You can just do a little one then. <laughs> we normally do has it in the preview, the game week preview. Yeah, this is more of a reaction one, isn't it? There still has but... to be a radar. We'll just do it a little oh, one. Oh, man, at the end. okay. It's <laughs> so hard to edit those things. Um, but I think, you know. Whilst United, I'm looking at them thinking forward forward players. There's no one actually at the moment that I really fancy right. in United. City, on the other hand, well, I'm now in a quandary, aren't I? Because having taken Silver out for Ramsey, Ramsey's now got this niggle. I think it's more than niggle, by the way. It's a hamstring. I mean, you know what Ramsey's like? He's got a... He's Absolutely. a good player, but he's got a history of, of, of injuries, hasn't he? You just know that he's out for probably a few weeks. Yeah. He's probably going to be my transfer out. I mean, depending on the news, if we get any between now and Tuesday. But, but then, him but, for silver, that, oh, it, it seems yes, like a really good transfer. I know that you don't want to do, do it because I mean, it feels like you're taking only, a step back. But. The only positive about doing it is that yeah. silver dropped in value after I got him out. So, <laughs> nice. okay, so I cool. actually <laughs> will get point one. <laughs> Yeah, that's from cool. having, okay. I've lost 11 or so points from having done this transfer stupid hokey cokey thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, you know, I will get point one back in value, so maybe that kind of is a little bit of a silver lining. But Oh, very good. You? Very good. Uh, you didn't even mean that. <laughs> I didn't mean it. You didn't even mean it. <laughs> Just come out. It was amazing. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of looking at City thinking, obviously I've got Otamendi. He's going what nowhere. What a great pick he is, by the way. Yeah. Oh, and I'm, I'm, he's I'm hurting me every week. I'm that you've not got on Otamendi yet. Wow, I've got a lot of problems in defence to sort out, namely Charlie Daniels, and there could be a Daniels to Otamendi upgrade coming along because I've got some money in the bank, but you know we'll see. If our teams couldn't get any more similar, uh, Otamendi could be coming Such into my team, but we'll have a look at that in a bit. Um, but yeah, City looking looking you know strong again. No Aguero today for City. No. He didn't start. I don't think he came on either. Which I don't think so. You would think, therefore, would mean that on... I think they're playing on Tuesday night. Let me just double-check that. They no, they're Swansea. playing on Wednesday. Go to Swansea on Wednesday. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you would think that they they would he would play in that you, game. Yeah, you think Hazard? It, Hazard? You think Aguero is going to start? For I would sure. have thought yeah. so. And Jesus again. Jesus only played sixty minutes though, so maybe he's looking at and he's looking maybe at that and both. thinking I've got to play both because. You know, you go to Swansea, uh, and although they're not in great form in terms of in front of goals, so I know they won 1-0 at the weekend, but they're not scoring a lot of goals. 
Um, they can be quite resolute, Swansea. They can Fabianski dig their heels in, and Fabianski and, and Co at the back. They can be quite hard to break down. Mm-hmm. So if I'm uh, if I'm Pep, I'm probably looking at playing both those two guys and being quite attacking yeah. at the weekend. Um, I read something on Twitter about you know the whole Pep rotation thing being actually a bit of a myth because if you look at the way that he set his team up in the last few weeks, outside of Aguero and Jesus, who do clearly rotate a lot. He's playing Sané and Sterling pretty regularly now. Obviously, KDB's in there pretty regularly. Uh, Bernardo Silva seems to have found a spot on the bench, you know, and then obviously David Silva seems to have found a, a pretty safe spot in the team. So um, there's some, you know, some feeling on Twitter, if you like, that actually it was more, it's actually now Klopp is the problem for rotation rather than oh, Pep. Klopp, I mean, so we're going to come Klopp to Klopp today. in a minute. In fact, we'll go there next. Um, but actually the Pep roulette that we keep talking about, as long as you're out, out of the Jesus Aguero thing, and maybe which you are got, now, which right? I am now, yeah. yeah. And I'm quite happy with that. Um, when Jesus, when Jesus started today, I was a bit worried. Um, but then he didn't yeah, really have much of a game, did he? Isn't it? You know, I was the same watching that game without Silver. So I think, you know. So what do you think about Liverpool then? So let's talk about that. So um, the, the feeling on Twitter is, you know, Pep actually is a bit of a myth. He's starting to find some consistency in his team selection. Klopp, on the other hand, is rotating like mad. And you're I, feeling the pain of that, right? Because of Firmino this week. I am. Um, I, I normally am a big fan of, of, of Klopp. Um, I was really frustrated with Klopp today because for me, you... It doesn't you, make him a bad manager, by the way. It just makes it him does. bad from an FPL if, perspective. If, if, <laughs> if I'm frustrated with him, that makes him a bad manager. Um, no, it doesn't. It just if From a fancy point of view, I'm talking about not from a... But actually, from a, just a fan point of view, okay. looking at a game. For me, when it's a derby like this, you play your best team. And... I'm not sure that he played your best team today. No, definitely not. No, definitely um, not. No, leaving Firmino on the bench, leaving Coutinho on the bench. Now, I know that there were rumours about Coutinho's fitness leading up to the game, um, but to then take Sil- uh, to take um, Salah off at 60-odd minutes, yeah, yeah. Um, when you weren't certain of winning the game, one nil up, you're never certain of winning a game in a derby, are you? You know, anything can happen no, totally, yeah. with, with half an hour to play. So to take your, your best player off and the player that's creating the most chances and if all the magic is going through, mm. um, for me, that's really frustrating. And then from a fantasy point of view, it really hurt me today because Firmino is my differential, if you like, against most players, yeah, particularly sure. against you. So for him to be left on the bench and then just come on for a, a one-point cameo, I mean, actually, I'm glad he came on for a one-point cameo because I would have had nothing else coming oh, off right, the bench, right. so at least I got <laughs> yeah, a okay. point. Um, but it's it's frustrating to me. Um, I think your, your feeling there is absolutely mirrored in the Twitter community, by the way. So a lot of people right. thinking... Um, you know, not just FPL, but a lot of the general football community thinking, you know, it's a, it's a derby. You play your best side. Absolutely. If you want to rotate, you rotate home to West Brom on Absolutely. Tuesday. Absolutely. Right? 100% um, agree with you. And I, and I know, you know, I look back to last season, I think about the absolutely monumental collapse that we had as a team in January. If you remember, we went out of the Champions League, went out of all the Cups, the league fell away. Um, and I think Klopp is really scared of that happening again. He's scared of all of his all of his players getting burnt out over Christmas. Okay. So because of that, we're starting to see a lot of rotation, a yeah. lot of rotation. And I think the feeling generally um, that's on Twitter about this kind of you know Klopp being the new Pep, I think it's spot on. It's I think really it's spot difficult. on. He's he's really he's really nervous that he's going to burn his his top players out. And there. actually, you listened to him in that post match interview today, and I, I came oh, down when he was a, on. That's a great interview, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I came down oh, to wow. the kids he's really angry. on the telly, and I've never seen Klopp like that. Very animated. Never Seen him yeah, lose his temper animated. in the way that he was with that with that guy. I don't know who it was that was interviewing him, but I mean the guy was only asking him a question about whether he thought it was a penalty. And honestly, if looks could have killed, the guy would have dropped dead there and then. Yeah. Pet, pet, uh, I just I don't know what was going on with Klopp um, today, and I don't like you say you know you're playing West Brom at home in the week. For me, that's a game to rest your best players if you need to. I I went into that game confident that Firmino. And Salah would start the game. Mm. So to get the team news, I thought you were winding me up, didn't I? I was like, you are joking <laughs> when you said that Firmino's not playing. So let's um, talk FPL in that game then. So Salah, again, do we even need to go there? No, I mean, no we don't need to go there. He's barely a differential I, I now, right? Because thing, everyone's got him. The only thing that we could perhaps say about Salah is, and it's maybe a little bit irrelevant for this game week because it was a derby game and anything can happen, but... It, it still amazes me how little he gets captained. When you look yeah. at the captain date, yeah, the yeah. St- stats that come up every week about you know who's being captained. I mean, this guy's knocking him in for fun, game in, game out. And mm. you think, you know, actually, I know that we all look for our big expensive players to captain because 
like you've said before, it's that kind of the reassuringly expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, but actually, Salah, I think for me, he's got to. I've got, I've got to start thinking about him as a captain choice every week, particularly yeah. in a game week against West Brom coming up. So one of my thoughts on this is that um, I was having this conversation in the pub last night. Um, one of my thoughts on this is actually Salah is not he's not much of a character, is he? Fantastic footballer, scores f- you know, fantastic goals, and FPL essential. If you haven't got him, you need him, right? Fifty eight or something but, percent of the game now. Yeah, I mean, so, so unless you're captain him, he's actually not a differential. No. Um, and one of the guys was saying to me last night, you know, it's, it's his it's his kind of his manner and his character. He's not very extrovert, is he? He's quite a mm-hmm. kind of you know, understated guy. But if he was, you know, like Popper at the MT- MTV EMAs yeah, and he's maybe. dabbing everywhere or he had jewellery and a massive a car and he's in the him. papers and all that, you'd, mo- you'd be thinking, well, this guy is like a, he's all more of a superstar then potentially. So uh, yeah. therefore we feel a bit more comfortable captain him. Now you could also equally leverage that at Kane. Kane's not like an out there extrovert, but yeah, there's but Kane's something got about the expensive. It's something about him being English and expensive and you want him to do well, don't you? So you're like, you give him the armband because he's that, reassuringly expensive player but I so I, I thought it was a great point and I, I can't take any credit for it um, mate of mine was saying this they said you know if he had the if he had the you know the va va voom of a Cristiano Ronaldo we'd all be talking about you know one of the best players in the world right now and, mm. and actually we would be captaining him all the time because he's got that kind of superstar status but he hasn't but maybe he should have because he's getting points and all I am, over the place and I'm, and I'm starting to think that you know Salah's one of those players that I'm never going to be able to get rid of now he's going to have to be in my team because everyone else has got him um, playing week in week out and, and actually so West Brom at home next game week captain again you see <laughs> same it's the same yeah but the, and I'll tell you why I'm jumping on that and we'll get to Spurs later but we're at home to Brighton um, off the back of a good couple of results now um, yeah. Champions League and then Premier League game we'll talk about Spurs later but that's where my my difficulty is if if you take Kane aside he would be the next he'll be my vice if he's not my okay. captain because one of my concerns was Salah playing today is like well then he might get rotated against West Brom but he's only played an hour so clearly Klopp wants him for the West Brom mm-hmm. game um, I've got a real you know, I think West Brom are, are really not playing very well at all at the minute, and and Salah could actually do some damage there. I agree with and you. And we'll want to, I think, we'll want to bounce back from that that game today. And Klopp, the way he was in that interview, he'll be ready, I think, to rip into West Brom. Well, I think he has but to go see. into it with his best team, doesn't he? I think so. Dominic Calvert Lewin, by the way, assist. Another assist. I don't yeah. want to talk about the way that he got that assist, but he got an assist, um, obviously for the Rooney penalty. So, are you looking at him? Is he in your team? He's not in my team. Okay. Um, I don't know if I am looking at him, actually. I think if I was looking at any of the Everton players at the moment, it might might be Rooney, which is a strange Can't thing to me, say. Really? Rooney? Yeah, I don't know. I just... I, I, I don't know. I don't know about Everton. I really feel uncomfortable <laughs> with Everton. I just feel really... Uh, everyone's talking about, you know, Everton. And, uh, that for me, they're all just watching. I'm watching them all at the moment and waiting to see what happens okay. with them. I just don't feel comfortable with any of them, to okay. be fair. So I'm actually I'm I'm acting on Everton. So I think they're 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 moving in the right direction. Um, Big Sam he comes in and he gets he gets them defensively organised. They've had two uh, home games, two clean sheets, and today, all right, they, you know, we, we probably should have won that game. But you, look look at it, look at that game um, without my Liverpool goggles on. Salah, it's a worldie, right? It's a worldie. And actually, Everton defended pretty well. And John Joe Kenny, I thought was fantastic. But the second fantastic. half without Salah, you didn't look anywhere near as, as good as you yeah, did. I know, but that's because Everton defended so resolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's, if I was an Evertonian, that's what I'd be saying. Yeah. So at John Joe Kenny at 4-3, you know, I'm thinking Daniels to Kenny and save myself a few quid. Actually looks really, really good. All of a sudden, I'm on Calvert-Lewin and Kenny and I'm sort of quite invested in Everton. I look at their fixtures and I think Newcastle and Swansea next. Great. I like the, like the sound of that. Chelsea at home is tricky, um, but, you know, they'll be resolute in that game. And then West Brom and Bournemouth. Around that Chelsea game, that is looking great for Everton. So mm. I, I know what you're saying, you know, watching maybe. But I, I think, well, I'm already on Calvert-Lewin. I like him for those next five fixtures. Um, and John Joe Kenny looks like a really good guy, a good guy to get in at the back too. Maybe, maybe. I mean, to be fair, I'm, I'm at the moment, I'm absolutely certain that I'm not, I'm not having any more players that you've got. Because it's annoying me <laughs> that you keep copying me every week. Um, so have you still got Tammy Abraham up front then? No. No, uh, no, I've got Maratta Kane and um Maratta Kane for me, you're on, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um so yeah. Uh, so no, I'm not getting any Everton players just yet. But let's let's move on because otherwise we'll, we'll be on this go on all, yes, all go the time. Yes, go on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right. Let's talk about Chelsea because for me that was that was the surprise of the fantasy. Yes, game. it was, absolutely. And again, um, West Ham I thought played very very well in that game. They did. Um but you know, the surprise to me given that, you know, 
I spent a lot of the week leading up to this getting a lot of abuse from people on <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> And not, not really what? abuse on um, not really abuse on YouTube, but a lot of people going, you really need to get Hazard. You really do need to get Hazard. Yes, I, I understand. <laughs> I understand that Hazard is a good player. I, I do. I understand the value of Hazard as a fancy asset. Absolutely, I do. Um, but I kept talking about, and I'm, and I'm still bang on about, it causes so much disruption. And I'm not talking, I'm not taking an eight point hit. Or a 12 point hit to get one player in. He's never going to get that many goals in the game, probably, mm. to cover it. So there's got to be a strategy in place, which is what I'd, I'd started this week with the Ramsey thing. And, yeah. and my plan was in place for, for the transfers I'm going to do next week. But actually, as it happens, I think I'll be going a backward step. Um, but actually, I looked at that game, and West Ham fans, with respect, haven't looked great lately. Um, better, oh, better, better, yeah. better, but haven't looked haven't looked like they should be beating Chelsea. Let's put it that way. Okay, yeah, that's um, probably fair. So for Chelsea to lose that game, I, you know, actually, if anything, I was reading a stat about Marasha and lack of his lack of goals over the last um, few game weeks, and it, and it's true, he's an expensive asset up top. You know, we're all talking about Kane. He's one of the most transferred out players of this Absolutely. game week, for the next game week, yeah. which I, I I still failed to get my head around. Right? Well, it's and something I, to do with that, and I can't remember the exact stat, but it was something like one goal in the last four Premier League games. Yeah, but I, do, um, I mean, I look at it and I think, who else are you going to have in that front three? I mean, you, you, clearly you go Kane again, and maybe that's what people are doing. They're going Morata to Kane and finding a bit of money there somewhere. Um but you look at the Chelsea fixtures, I mean, and Morata, um, Kane aside, is there anybody else in that top three that you'd really want? I'm more than happy to have him, and I'm be sticking on Morata, and I assume well, you I, will too. I, yeah, I'm going to be sticking on him, but I, I just think that there is... I don't know, I don't know. I, I fully expect to see Chelsea back and reacting to what happens against so. West Ham yeah, so. um, in their next game. Um, so I'm less, I mean, you know, I'm not worried about that. What I will say from that game is, uh, you know... West Ham, they're going to be going into that game now because they got they were having coming into two tough games, Chelsea, and then they two got, London derbies, they got Arsenal, Arsenal next, next. Yeah. and they would have been going into those games thinking, right, okay, well, let's just, you know, see what happens. Yeah, but maybe there's something in their Lack mind of, that says we've got nothing to lose. We're, we're expected to lose those games, so let's just go out there and see what we get. And I have to, I have to say. Um, and I've been a I've been a Joe Hart fan for some time, right? England's number one for some time. Um, you know, Adrian has come in and done a fantastic job yeah. there. Fantastic job. And I've got, I, I read it on Twitter earlier, I'll try and dig it out and stick it on the um, on the side here. Something about the fact that, you know, they've only lost one game since that Adrian's played this Is year in right? the Premier League. And that was against City, I think. So no shame in losing <laughs> no, against City. No, no shame So, in there. you know, Adrian's come on and, and doing a really good job. He looked, he looked pretty safe at the weekend, you yeah. know. And any, any goalkeeper that's keeping Hazard and Morata out deserves a bit of a pat on the back. There was another guy that played um, wing back for West Ham called um, I'm getting his name wrong, but I think it's Mas Masu Masuoko. I think his name is. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Masuoko. Yeah. Masuoko. A Masuoku. So um, yeah, I mean he looks he looks solid as anything, right? And there was one. Playing. Yeah, and there was one um, period of play in the second half where he was keeping he was hideously deep and he kept Morata on side and Morata should have scored and it whisked past, whisked past the post. That aside. I thought he was very, very good, and he's he's pretty cheap in FPL. He's sort of four ish, four three ish. I mean, to be honest, I'm uh, you know go back to my jammy pick from a few weeks ago, Lanzini with another assist um, in that Looks game right, today. Lanzini, isn't he? I, I think he's looking decent, and and he's one that I'm I'm seriously thinking about taking a little bit of a punt on. Um, the reason I haven't done it yet was because of these two tough fixtures, Chelsea and then Arsenal in the week. Um, but actually, I think after that, the West Ham fixtures get a little bit better. Well, yeah, and so West Ham's fixtures, yeah, except outside of that Arsenal game, um, we'll come to that in a sec because I actually don't think that's that's I think that's hard now for Arsenal. Um, but they go Stoke, Newcastle, Bournemouth. Then they've mm -hmm. clearly got the blank, and then it's a double. Yeah. So. Um, so for me, Lanzini after the Arsenal game is 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 a potential option mm. over the Christmas period. So let's talk about the Arsenal game then. So Arsenal played. Oh goodness me! I didn't watch it that long ago. Who did Arsenal play? Southampton. Sorry, Saints fans. Yeah. So Arsenal played Southampton, and, and we're very lucky. 
Um, I think Southampton can count themselves unlucky in that game. Yeah, I actually think that Charlie Austin could have had a hat trick in the first twenty minutes. Mm. I mean, they, they come out other blocks up to like you wouldn't believe, like an absolute house on fire. Um, really good goal from Charlie Austin. Yeah. Um, is he one that you're looking at? Is he on your potential radar, Charlie Austin? I think he's got to be now. Yeah, hasn't absolutely. He? I, and I, I think I said last week, no, um, he needs to prove himself to me over the next couple of weeks. And I think actually watching him, like you say, in that first twenty minute period, goal should have maybe had a hat trick. Um, he's definitely one to watch now. Do the fixtures put you off though? Because they've got a couple of tricky fixtures. They've got Leicester and Huddersfield at home, but around that, Chelsea, Spurs, United, all away against big sides. I mean, that's that's tricky. Yeah, yeah, it's tricky. Um, you know, Ch- Chelsea, Spurs, and who? Who's the other big side you're United, we've got to go to Old Trafford. Okay, well, Chelsea and, and United are a bit more watertight than we are. They can score at Wembley. Everyone can score at Wembley. Um, and Crumbs, <laughs> Not bitter about it. Sure, so can score at both ends. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think... Um, I don't know. I think for a, a relatively cheap third striker option, he's got to be... He's in that bracket, isn't you know, he? He's got to be there. It's got to be worth a thought. Yeah, yeah, totally. Definitely. Yeah, totally. And Arsenal-wise, I mean, uh, again, they looked a, oh, well, a little bit laboured, a little bit lethargic. You know, it's a wet... Sunday afternoon in Southampton. You said it, didn't you? Ozil kind of looked barely interested, didn't he? Sanchez was kind of there. Um, and I, I, and again, again, something on Twitter, I read some stats about how Sanchez, Sanchez I'll try and put it on the side here, it's, something, it's a stat about wayward passes, or his pass completion rate was the lowest it's ever been for an Arsenal player in but the league you, this year, Sanchez. He had, a, he, had a, he had a poor game, I thought. I mean, you notice... They, the, the, all these rumours about January transfers have started to raise their heads his head? again, and 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 you know part of me wondered whether because the Coutinho has been back in the news, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That. And, yeah. And you know, same with Sanchez this week, and you just wonder both of those players, Coutinho with this injury that's kept him on the bench, but he's come on. Um, Sanchez just looking disinterested, like, are oh, is it all back in their heads again now? It's coming towards the end of that. This, it's a busy period, I know, um, but for me, that those two are quite risky at the moment. Mm. Um, nothing for Ramsey, of course. So nothing um, for Ramsey, and I think he's going to have to probably be my sub if he's pulled a hammy. But we'll yeah, see. I think he was injured at about eighty minutes or so. But because uh, because Arsenal had already made their three subs, he kind of had to Limp struggle on. on. So the reality was, Southampton were playing against ten men last ten. Mm. Could have won it as well. Um, so it looks as if it's probably bad news for Ramsey uh, clearly I, I would guess he's going to miss uh, the next game when they are at home to West Ham which is what we're talking about um, after that it's home to Newcastle then home to Liverpool you'd fancy him at home to Newcastle if he recovers in time but then you'd probably that Liverpool game could go either way the fixtures don't look too bad and that's the reason we both got him in right there's a little bit of a differential there and actually in the last seven games or so he actually returned in six of them so he looked really good Ramsey very consistent if he's done a hammy, I think he's got to go. Absolutely. Uh, and for I me, just, I'll be looking at maybe... I'll go back to silver, probably. Yes, I think I'll be upgraded to probably a Man City player. I won't go silver. I think I'd go Sterling. Um, but there's others that I want to take a look at as well, like Coutinho, I'll be back. Um, and I do think that we'll want to rip into that that West Brom side. But we'll come to transfers a bit later on. But yeah, clearly Ramsey, a bit of a problem there. Okay. Lacazette, again, looking a bit disinterested in the game. Well, not disinterested. Yeah, to be fair, just... that, that game, watching Southampton and Arsenal this weekend... It was the Southampton players from a fantasy point of I view that so, I was yeah, thinking I think about. So. Likes of Tadic, the likes of Austin, even the defence at Southampton who haven't looked great. And I know they conceded in this game, but they actually looked decent for the yeah, majority yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and just so, yeah. on the Lacazette thing, I, I think he was making some all right runs actually. He just wasn't necessarily getting the service. But, you know. Same de- as def- always, though, isn't it, with them? If, if Sanchez yeah. and Ozil and Ramsey play well, Lacazette's going to play well. Yeah, he's the one they're finishing them off, isn't he? So, all right, watching brief for those guys. Where do you want to go next? Let's go to Wembley because we were, uh, while we're in the top bit of the table go on then not too um, long on Spurs uh, I don't think there's a lot to say to be honest apart from um, obviously came with, with the brace yeah, which absolutely, is nice yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the one thing I would like to talk about is Sun because he's gone under the radar yeah. a lot you keep saying no but then actually you know you've got, got to start saying yes I you, think you've got to, I mean Every week we sit here and we talk about Sonny. He's playing more regularly. I think while Davidson Sanchez is injured, I'd expect to see him in the next... I mean, that, sorry, while he's suspended. Uh, I'd expect to see him in the next two games. Okay. Um, until Sanchez comes back at least, and then we go back to a back five, and then he might be the one that drops out again. Um, but I just think that the, the kid looks on fire. You know, he scored he really a goal, does. two assists. He really does. Three bonus points in that game. 
I mean... He looks well beat to at the weekend. And, you know, obviously a lot of the FPL headlines are, you know, Harry Kane and it's, you know, split between people that they have and they have not, frankly. Because uh, if you've got him, most people have captained him. Um, but Son, I think, definitely deserves a mention. I think he's in a, a reasonable price bracket. He's in that kind of Ramsey bracket, actually. He's in that kind of seven-ish bracket. I guess you kind of go back to what we were talking about before on Spurs with the fixtures turning the way they're turning. You know, Brighton at home, yes, I have him for that. City, Burnley in a blank... Maybe maybe I'm not so excited about having him for those. But then you've got the double game week coming up as well. So maybe, you know, a Kane and Son double up for 22 doesn't maybe not look too bad. So definitely, um, you know, how many weeks can we sit here and say it? I, I keep saying, you know, I'm watching these players. Like Shakiri, we sat here, didn't we? Like, just watching, just watching. All the time, ticking over points. So I just think that maybe for... it's time to get on these players a bit quicker, you know? I mean, I don't know. We, we talked and I said in the week when we filmed our last blog that I didn't expect a European hangover from us because everybody had had a rest. Quite and right, my goodness, yeah, quite did they right. come out and they, they sort of... Played really well, I suppose, yeah. Um, it's nice to see um, Christian Eriksen back on the score sheet. It was his 200th game for the club, so to score a goal in that is fantastic. Good, right? yeah. um, Deli Alley with an assist... Yeah, I think all the Spurs players are just, they're starting to bubble in terms of those forward forward players anyway. Okay. So they're all ones that I'm just starting to think about watching. I've never really been that comfortable only having Kane in my team, so I would like another. Um, so it's just working out which one. Okay. Did you get a, uh, a clean sheet out of your Burnley defender on... Well, no, because... Um, you got Ben Mee, though, ben right? Mee. Yeah, yeah, bummer. So, right, so let, let's go to Burnley then. I, I think um, I actually didn't play him anyway. I left him on my bench because I was... Confident, really, that Watford would score. Watford tend to be quite good away, don't they? they? Tend so, to be good away yeah, from home. Yeah, yeah. And, and I thought, you know, I know that Burnley have kept, you know, they've only conceded three at home all season. Um, so they are really good at home, but Watford looked decent away. So I, I just thought I'd stay out of the game. I'm just going <laughs> to I'll have Retardison and then I'll stay out of it. Um, no Kiko Firmina for Watford, no. which I was. And I nearly did that. I nearly did Charlie Daniels mm. to him. Um, mm. As my second transfer, because I had two free transfers. And Still might? Did one. No, I don't think I'm going to now. Is he a rotation um, risk now? I mean, not played, or was he just... Well, now I'm worried about it. I'm worried about him as a rotation because risk. Because if he was a rotation risk, surely he'd have been on the bench at the weekend. I don't think he was. I don't think no, he's even no, in the he squad, wasn't so maybe on, he's no, got a problem. He, was on, uh, he has. He's, um, he's got a muscle muscle strain. Okay, um, so, all right. so, I'm, so I'm not thinking about it. The, the, the app is suggesting that there's gonna, he's got a 75% chance of playing, but I never pay much attention to what they say, because they seem to get that wrong. Um, so if it wasn't Kiko Firmino, it was potentially uh, Ziegler. As well was another well, one. Well, I think we were both looking at, but clearly not. Well, not I didn't. Look at, I actually looked at Cavalassi as the other. As my, it was either going to be Kiki or it was going to be Cavalassi. I think you say <laughs> Kiki or Cavalassi. Yeah, Kiko mm. or you know what I mean. Cabaselli. That's it. Um, <laughs> so they were the ones I was looking at. Brilliant. See, uh, I knew, told you all I never get my pronunciation right. I just you got some, you got a, you got a round of applause on Twitter by the virtual round of applause for your right, um, West Brom player. Yeah, who's that guy? Krachovia. Krachovia. Yeah. Well, right, <laughs> People actually. saying, "Well done, Sam. You've got the pronunciation yeah. spot well, on." It's because I haven't written <laughs> the other one down. I didn't write it down phonetically. You see, that's the problem. I need to do that. <laughs> um, so yeah. So that was my other thinking: is that Watford's games look all right after Burnley because Burnley's a sort of it's a hard place to go to. Burnley. Yeah. yeah. Palace, um, Huddersfield, Brighton, Leicester, Swansea. Yeah. Looking good still, I think. Yeah, so I'm happy to stick on Richarlison, definitely. And I was thinking about a, a Watford defender, and I'm still sort of thinking about a Watford defender. I'm just not really sure. Do they become defensively really sure. less solid with no Ziegler and no Firmino, then? I think so. I think so, too. That's the one thing putting me off them at the minute, is I think there's other good options out there. Watford, yeah, clearly, um, it's worth complimenting Richarlison with a defender. But the minute they've got a few holes out at the back, mm. and they've got potentially some inexperienced guys to come in. So... Yeah, let's see how they get on against Palace away, which is not an easy game anyway. Where they might not get a clean now. sheet. So maybe look at that in 17 with a view to getting one of them in Huddersfield at home mm. in 18. Okay. Um, That's well, Watford. All right, well, let's... Was it a red card, by the way, in your opinion, Ziegler? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? I have seen it. I think it's probably a bit harsh. Okay, yeah, I thought it was a bit harsh too. Is it two feet off the floor, so... I guess letter of the law says he's got to go. Well, the same um, as the penalty at Liverpool, isn't it? Letter of the law, it's a penalty, but it's a bit harsh. Yeah, I think he more like I think he more like slipped, didn't yeah. he, Ziegler, and his kind of feet went up like that. But yeah. okay. either way, he's out now for three games, I guess. So well, I, yeah, yeah. Transfer him out if you've got him. Let's go to Palace next because that's where Watford are going anyway. Sure. Um, next game week, so Palace two, Bournemouth two. Interesting game that one. I thought. Um, 
Defoe to, back on the score sheet. Two really goals for Defoe. Pleased, nice, really, right? Really, really pleased about that. Um, and Defoe's definitely one I, I'm watching. As a... Did you see his little um, his little conversation with Hodgson afterwards when Hodgson walks past him? Says, he says, like, still scoring him or something like that. And Defoe would carry on his interview for, interview for a bit and then said, still didn't take me to the World Cup or something. <laughs> so it was brilliant. See, I just love Jermaine Defoe. I think he's brilliant. Still um, banging a minute his age. Brilliant, right? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, Defoe, I, I would really, really actually quite like to get Defoe in my fantasy team, but I really worry about... <laughs> that would be a heart-over-head yeah, well, decision, would. that, wouldn't it? It yeah. would, absolutely. Um, because that, for me, I think um, there's that, there's just that risk, isn't there, at Bournemouth, with those three striker options in King and Callum Wilson yeah. and Defoe. Yeah. And let's not forget their fixtures read... Oh, great. The fixtures coming up, Man United, Liverpool, City, and then West Ham and Everton, so... I don't think you want him no. or anybody else at nice the front of those. Score. Nice to see him score. Um, Callum Wilson, if you've got him, do you hold, given the fixtures no, now look red and he's being dropped? I wouldn't. It's sad to see that, really. I mean, like I said before on these vlogs, Wilson's a bit of a favourite of mine from a couple of years ago, um, where he had a bit of a hot streak and he was a, he was a permanent fixture in my team. I think he might have even captained him once. He got a couple of goals. Brilliant. Um, so to see him come back and get that hat trick, I thought, great, he's back. You know, I'm getting back in the team. And I didn't. I thought I'd just wait to see if that was a bit of a one-game wonder. Um and I don't think he's a one-game wonder, but he's now being dropped and Defoe's coming in. So there's, two, there's a bit too many options, yeah. A bit too many um, options. I think from a Palace point of view, however, there are there are some, some interesting options. So obviously Benteke missing a penalty. Um, not really ever thinking about getting Benteke on my that team. That was a funny one as well, wasn't it? Because he was just like, you know, Benteke was like, right, that's something, you know, I wanna, I'm want i going to take this. And he's clearly not the penalty taker at mm. Palace. It's, it's Millie, isn't it? Millie mm. Jochovic, however you say his name. Because he took one, didn't he? I think Millie scored. Mm. And even after the game, Hodgson was seething. He was seething that Benteke took that over Miljovic. So, um, yeah, all, all not well there in no. the Palace camp with Benteke, I don't think. No, um, I think, you know, if, if you've got, got to potentially start looking at Zahar again, maybe. I don't know what Palace's fixtures are looking like moving forward. Let's have a look. Crystal um, Obviously, Palace. they've got Watford. Um, Watford, Leicester, Swansea, so not looking too bad. And then Arsenal, Man City. So... So bit of a, a bit of a mixed games. bag, but short term okay ish. Yeah. So you know, maybe if you've not got Loftus Cheek and you're looking for a cheaper option, Zaha maybe is one is one to think about potentially. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not. I think I'm happy just sticking on Loftus Cheek for now. I think if you've got Loftus Cheek, I don't think you'd want another Palace player. No. Mm. Okay. Huddersfield then. Huddersfield two and Brighton nil. Um. Okay. Mounier back with his brace. Yeah. Does he? But does is he? You know, we um, keep talking about this kind of uh, third striker. Is he back on the radar? I don't now? think so. No. I think, <sighs> Well, look, it's one game, isn't it? It's one game, and when you think about it, Huddersfield and Brighton, they, they've played each other for, for years. It's an old championship rivalry. Um, they know each other. It, it's it's always a bit more... I think you get a bit more of a... I don't know. I don't, I don't quite know what the right way to describe it is, but when the old championship rivalries come about, you start to see maybe the better of these players because they know how to play against okay. each other. And Mounier knows what to, what to expect with Brighton, I guess. Um, so for me, yes, it's nice to see him scoring again. Yeah, I guess we can, you know, could have him on a radar. We can watch him definitely, but I, I wouldn't be, you know, grappling to get him back in again. There's a lot of people that are going to be on a Callum Wilson or an Abraham that are kind of assessing their options though, and as a maybe an outside differential when everybody seems to be loading up on Calvert Lewin, not just because of his ability to get assists, but also his nice rotation with Loftus Cheek. If you've noticed that, mm. um, that third striker spot. If they, if you don't want Calvert Lewin. Mooney, I think, is, is one to have a look at. I mean, they've got... Uh, let's have a look at the fixtures. So it's Chelsea at home next, which is is tricky. But then it's Watford away, Southampton away, Stoke at home, Burnley at home. So Huddersfield, as a side, are not in great form. I think that's their, it's their first win at the weekend in, I think, five games. So not great. But, you know, if Munier can be the catalyst for them to start scoring goals again, that may be not a bad shout. Maybe. maybe. Bad shout. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not... Looking at either Huddersfield no, or Brighton okay. and thinking okay. I need their players. Assists for um, Schindler and... Huddersfield defenders, right? Yeah, Schindler Zanka. 11 and Zanka got 10 or 11. It's nice. If you're holding on to those players, then that's a nice little Brucey bonus. Bonus, yeah, bonus. I don't know why you'd be holding on to those players, given Huddersfield's current form, but if you did, fair and, play, and 11 Hitchers points. Beautiful. Next. Yeah, beautiful. Um, okay. Um, interesting then result with Swansea. Swansea 1 and Watford, uh, I'm sorry, and West Brom 0. Mm -hmm. Um wasn't really expecting Swansea to win that game. I was sort of expecting them to play out a, a boring nil-nil draw, to be honest. Well, I would have been happy with that and I actually played Norton and Foster. Yeah, I so Foster. up until when Bonnie scored, I was quite happy for that mm -hmm. to be nil-nil. And then I saw Bonnie scored, I thought, well, OK, you know, at least maybe uh, the Swansea clean sheet might be intact. And actually Norton returned with seven, so I was yeah, kind, of, kind of happy with that, actually. I mean, Bonnie, he's an interesting character, isn't he, in terms of fantasy 
from a fantasy point of view. Like he's he's returning fairly regularly at the moment. Um, fixtures wise, don't think it's looking that great for Swansea, is it? Let's have a look. Swansea. I was just going to look up his uh, his um, value there or his price. So they've got to play Man City at home next, which is clearly really difficult. Tough. Then they go to Everton, which is but you can't is score difficult. against City. Yeah, Swansea got like nine goals all year. I can't. They're not going to score against. They're not going to score the Etihad. They won't see enough of the ball. It's at Swansea, isn't it? Sorry, at Swansea, but they still won't see enough of the ball. Um, <laughs> Everton away, which now is difficult. You know, a few weeks ago that would have been all right, but now that's difficult. Palace at home, okay, but then go to Anfield and then go to Watford. So mm, okay. I'm not. No, nah, I'm not crazy jumping on on. Um, I on think Bonnie. if I was gonna. What? If I was going to have a Swansea striker, I'd have Bonnie over Abraham at the moment, which is a swing from where we were a couple yeah, of weeks maybe, back. Maybe. Um, although obviously Abraham did get did get the assist. Yeah. That and West Brom, week. it's looking it's looking pretty poor, isn't it? It's looking yeah. pretty poor. I don't. I think that's no winning six now for them. Mm. Three three draws, three defeats. Got to go to Anfield next. That's um, why I need to sort out my um, keeper situation this week. Yes. Yeah. We need to come to that in a bit. So let's but... talk about that. We'll go to Newcastle. Yeah, the, the Darlo played again, didn't he? And no Elliot again, no Elliot which is again. a real bummer, isn't it? Because we're all sitting here on this 4.0 keeper and he's playing and actually actually looking all right. A few save points as well. Um, more than enough to warrant your 4.0 4. investment. All of a sudden he's out the door and Darlow's in. Um, so a bit gutted about that. What, what, what's your thinking? What are you thinking? Um, well, I was thinking about swapping him for Fabianski because although Swansea don't keep clean sheets, at least Fabianski gets a lot of points and saves. Okay. Um, because I want I, I, but then I'm also thinking, well, do I double up at United and get De Gea? I know mm-hmm. it's a bit more money, but then that, I don't know, that leads back to the situation with Ramsey and Silva, and oh, I don't know. But I do need to sort it out. I need I need to swap Elliot for somebody because I'm not I'm most of the time not comfortable with Foster. Mm. Um, I'm comfortable with Foster as You've a second. You've got to find a million and a half though to get De Gea, haven't you? Which I have got because of the silver Ramsey thing. Okay. Um, okay. But then obviously I've got to deal with Ramsey now if he's got a hammy. Um, so is your have you, can you do Ramsey back up the silver or Elliot to De Gea or could you do both? I don't think I could quite do both. But then okay. I've got two free transfers, so I don't know. I need I need to have a little think about it because effectively I've got two free transfers. If I do three, I could I'd only be taking a four point hit. So I okay. might be out. Mini of, wild card. I might be out of. Yeah. But I don't know yet. I need to look at it in a bit more detail and, and where these players are in the numbers game that is going on at the moment. Um, but yeah, so I need to deal with Elliot. I, yeah. My thoughts on the Elliot thing is yes, De Gea would be a nice upgrade. Have I got a million and a half knocking about? The thing is, I would also rather keep it and put it in Hazard, so... Yeah, true. And I, I don't think I have got a million and a half knocking about. But I looked at the way that Adrian performed against Chelsea. I don't think he's that expensive. I don't, you certainly haven't got to find a million and a half. I think no. maybe half um, to get up to sort of 4-6, 4-7 sort of territory. The West Ham fixture's coming up. You know, yes, Arsenal at home. Then Stoke, Newcastle, Bournemouth. I kind of like those. Then the blank. All right, you've got to deal with that blank, but you just play your other keeper. And then the double. But what worries me about this is at some stage, is Joe Hart going to start playing again? Um, yeah, you have got to look at that, I suppose. But, it, you know, the way that the way that um, Adrian is playing and, the, and the, the, the change that's happened to them defensively, he can't, he can't swap them back. He just can't swap them back. Adrian's been fantastic. Mm. So, for me, he looks like a, a definite option in there. Um, I might look to see what happens in the Arsenal game. And then think mm. about drafting him okay. in. Um, so yeah, the goalkeeping situation with Elliot is one I think we've got to sort out. Um, it's just whether you've got the funds to do De Gea, I think, or if you fancy going, um, I don't know. There's other, Adrian's there's other options one, out Foster's there. another, Fabianski's the not bad either. So, so I like having Foster because Foster is guaranteed to play every week. Um, West Brom aren't great, but he does make saves and he tends to get the odd save point here and there. So it's, he's, I'm, I'm quite happy with Foster. Yeah. Um, so it's just finding another cheap-ish keeper Pickford at Everton potentially he was one I looked at I also obviously looked at Pope because you know why not you've got to look at Pope um, yeah good shout yeah you have to don't you so that I looked at Pickford I looked at Pope I've looked at the upgrade to De Gea but I don't think I want to do that I've looked at Fabianski because of the save points that he makes so there's more options out there I just need to work out which one I want okay. um, but you know I, I stay sticking with Newcastle for a minute I did say in our last vlog I think maybe we need to start looking at Hosselu again and he did score I know oh, Newcastle lost on. the game what? but he did one score one goal he's useless well, nah he's useless not having that. They're, they're so out of form. You, Newcastle are so out of form at the minute. What's their form Should at the minute? Should have had him as my jammy pick, shouldn't I? Five defeats, one draw in the last six. There's something radically, radically wrong at that club at the minute. There's all this takeover talk. The players are unsettled. Benitez is getting the ump, wants to go somewhere a bit warmer than, than Newcastle. 
It's all going wrong for them in a minute. No, yes, Hosselu really... scored. I get that, but well, I, I'm just going to take. This. I'm just going to take a little bit of credit for that. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about Leicester. Um, so Mar- I did say that Hosselu might score. Yeah, Mar is again. Yeah, um, now now we're talking about a better FPL asset here, aren't we? I mean, Mares, despite the bleach blonde hair, does look very, oh, he looks very good. atrocious, but he can score a goal. Mm. And actually, FPL asset set Leicester. Uh, Mares has scored the goal. I think Gray scored against Newcastle as well. He so... did. It was Mares and Gray, assist from Ndidi Okazaki. No, Okazaki. Did and he get Brighton. credited with that in the end? Yeah, yeah, he got it. Because it was a bit of a, bit of a fluffy yeah, own goal, wasn't it? He got an assist. God, Okazaki and um, goal. Okay, so Leicester's fixtures coming up. Southampton away, Palace at home, United at home, Watford away, Liverpool away. But it, but bit I, of a mixed bag there for Leicester. I still Leicester. stick by what we said last week. You know, I'm looking at Leicester players, the likes of Mahrez and Gray, not Okazaki, but you know what I mean. Maguire still, I think. Um, I'm not looking at Vardy. No, I think, you, I think you always have to keep him in your thoughts because he's that sort of player. But if I was going to get on somebody at Leicester at a minute, probably... Probably it would be Mahrez yeah, or, or maybe so. even Gray. Um, but Newcastle, no. I might um, actually keep on Maguire at some stage. Maguire, yeah, what is he? Sort of five, five mm. and a bit? Might, might have a little cheeky. Could be a Charlie Maguire Daniels uh, alternative, couldn't he? But I think there's other there's other better players out there at, at, low, at a lower price. Newcastle, no, nah, not touching them with a barge pole at the minute. They look woeful. Uh, where do they go next, by the way, Newcastle? They've got Everton at home. Everton at home? Yeah, that's, Everton, I mean... Big Sam's obviously doing good things there, and you know I clearly think they were a bit lucky to come away from Anfield with a point today. But they'll be buoyed by that. Going up to Newcastle will hold no fear for them whatsoever. Um, more than more than happy to have Calvert Lewin in that game. More okay. than happy. Um, I think just to do, just to do a little quick ra- radar because I know you don't really want to do one, but I do. I think Go on, need a chuck radar. out a couple of players. Just a couple on there. of players on. then that I think uh, ones to watch for game week seventeen. Seventeen, um, yeah, yeah. So, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. Um, Son at Spurs. Yep. Lanzini at West Ham. I want, I want him there. Um, who else did I have? Austin at Southampton. Yeah. Mara's at Leicester. I know they're playing each other, but still. Uh, who else did I have? That's it. So it's only a little, oh, small radar. It's only okay. a little, oh, little radar good. this week. I, I, it's short and sweet for you this week. Um, yeah, just okay. a couple. All right, okay. Um, and in terms of transfers, what are you oh. thinking? I mean, let's, let's try and... We said we'd try and do okay, this in a couple so, of minutes. So, so Tuesday, Wednesday's coming up. You've probably only got 24 to 48 hours to think about what you want to do. Depending on what the news on Ramsey is, um, will depend on whether I transfer him out again. Um, I, if I do, I'll probably go back to Silva. Um, the, other, the other options, because I've got two this week, so I'll either deal with... Elliot, or I'll deal with Daniels, or I might just do both. You've got two here. I've got two points. Yeah. Okay, nice. Um, okay. So Daniels, I'm thinking. Yeah, I don't know. So there's, there's. I, I even thought about Joe Gomez at Liverpool. <laughs> Got to try um, and do this in a couple of minutes. Remember. Yeah. So I thought about <laughs> Gomez. I've, I've talked about these already. Really. Um, there's a lot of defenders out there that are possibles, but but your game against West Brom, I think you'll keep a clean sheet. So I am thinking about a Liverpool defender. Okay. Um, and Elliot, I've talked about. I think Fabianski, Pope, Pickford, somebody along those lines. I think Robertson looked all right for us today, yeah, and yeah. Moreno's obviously got a bit of a, a medium term injury, so Robertson's probably well, going to play. Him, yeah, and I'm not going anywhere near Lovren. Um, God, so right. so yeah, I think uh, I think maybe Gomez or maybe Robertson somewhere like that might might go to Liverpool and give you a cheeky little. Okay. Okay. Against Alright, well I, th- I still think um, you know, I think that City have got more than one hand on the trophy so having no City in my team makes me a little uncomfortable. Am I happy that I got rid of Jesus? Yeah, I think so because there's that him and Aguero roundabout that's going to go on and on and on. I do think they're both playing the next game. I do think he's going to go pretty attacking to kind of break mm. down that Swansea side at the Liberty. Um, however, that I do, I do buy into this thing about it being a bit of a myth around the midfield. I do think Sané and Sterling seem to be getting pretty regular starts now. Okay, so you're gonna have one of those two, are you? I think so, and I, and I, and I do like Sterling. He was getting in, you know, central dangerous positions today against United. Sané does seem quite wide. He does seem to be out there, and he's still a dangerous player. But he seemed to be. I think he's been told to kind of stretch the play out there, whereas Sterling's in the middle doing the damage. So, given that he's cheaper as well, Ottomendi uh, as well. Uh, maybe, but a Ramsey to Sterling looks good, and then I'd I'd like to I'd like to move Daniels on. I think um, reluctantly because I like Charlie Daniels, mm. but I want to move him on. Um, also, Mendy potentially, but um, you know Christensen you. Uh, again for Chelsea. I'm, I'm looking at him. Despite the blip today, I think Kalasinac looked reasonably dangerous-ish again against Southampton, and Arsenal's fixtures don't look too bad. Um, and then obviously United, you know, got Phil Jones could potentially I'd do the David de Gea thing. 
or do you go and try and get a Valencia or something like that at a bit more premium? So lots to think about, but the two that I want to get rid of, clearly, are Ramsey, if the injury is bad, which I think it's going to be, a few weeks at least, um, and uh, and um, Daniels. So Those... you're going to stick with Elliot for a little bit longer? I think that's probably just a necessary evil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want to spend, you know, I've got only one free transfer, by the way. So uh, if okay, I'm, I'm, fine. So you you're know, talking about four point here anyway. Uh, yeah, I'll be sorting out one of those two and I don't want to do an extra four point hit to get rid of um, no, to just okay, on a that keeper, makes sense. So, yeah. so that's okay. me jammy pick for Tuesday Wednesday so I looked at the fixtures and decided I quite fancy Burnley against Stoke okay. um, so I'm going to go with Jack Cork at Burnley Jack Cork uh, he's getting more and more random every week it's worse than Sam Field last weekend for what was it West Brom yeah don't mention terrible that terrible shout <laughs> Did he even play? Did he even play? Leave your comments below, guys. If any of you are seeing any value in this Jammy Pick feature, then let us know. <laughs> if, you're, if you're seeing that. Oh, Lanzini was good. Yeah, I'll give you Lanzini. It's, you know, I think we've had a couple of... It's been a couple of hits, But yes, it, harder as the season goes on because they all do something. So you have to kind of... I'm, I'm like scraping the barrel at the bottom of the pack. So go on, I want um, to see this. Yeah, I so want to hear about this. Go on. What? Jack Cork, I want to hear this. Well, just fancy Burnley to beat Stoke. <laughs> I just, just think they'll win. Just think yeah. they'll win. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't do defenders because that's just really boring. Okay. So, um, so I thought, why not pick a big midfielder? Why not? Why not Jack Cork? Burnley, 4.6 million. I only own by 3.8% of the game. Get yourself yeah. a bargain. All right. Okay. Um, I'd like to um, pick, no. pick on the Everton thing again because, again, you know, oh. he Sam came to Anfield today, didn't play Lennon at all because he, you know, oh, he's that... not interested in attacking, was he, today? I just want to sit... Clearly, uh, they're going to go to Newcastle and fancy that. And Newcastle are terrible. So I think, you know, Calvert-Lewin, yes, he's a really obvious, obvious sort of pick. Hmm. Lennon, I think, you know, having you rested Lennon. this game week yeah. and you picked him out Came a couple on, of weeks ago, he, um, he could, he could do all right. He could do all right. I think so. I, I think Lennon's a good pick. Um, yeah, I, I like Lennon. I think he's a good fancy asset. He certainly could do the business. Okay, all right. So I'm that's just... One I thought I'd put out there, given that I watched the game, so I thought Lennon was all right after he came on. Um, and on, on, on that note, on that Liverpool game, I think I need to go and start drowning my sorrows again, because that was I was quite emotional during that game today, wasn't I? Quite emotional. It was, it was... I'm just glad we built the snowman this morning, so it wouldn't have gone well this <laughs> It was one of those games where it was like, everything seemed to be going fine. We were dominating, dominating possession, should have scored more goals. And then just out of nowhere, he just pushes him in the back, and oh... I've had it with Lovren. Can we? I've had it with Lovren. Right, just let's let's move away from Liverpool and your bitterness, <laughs> and let's have your top points pick of the week, please. Oh, I didn't even do a top points pick. So, um, <laughs> despite that, despite that, I've got to go. I've got to go to Anfield, I think, and I've got to say that Mohamed Salah is is got to be right up there. Yes, Kane is at home to Brighton. I get that, um, and that is another obvious captain choice. So we'll talk about captains in a minute. I think I know where you're going to go. Um, but for me, Salah, um, he looks unstoppable. And, you know, even when you need a bit of magic, he pops up with magic. He scores all sorts of goals. He had another header against Everton today where he headed it back across the goalkeeper. I thought, brilliant technique. And it's very unlucky not to score. He scores all sorts of goals. <laughs> West Brom are in a sticky patch, to they say are, the least. They are, definitely. Um, so I actually, I actually fancy Salah to, again, do the business against West Brom. Had he played 90 minutes... I'll potentially say not, um, but he did, I think Klopp bought him off after 60, so he's kind of given him a bit of a break there for that game. Firmino's back, so you know, Solanke did all right today, but Firmino is you know, far more attractive a proposition if you're a Salah owner or a mm. Mane owner. So I'm going to go Salah, seems a bit obvious. Um, Are you captaining him then? It's between him and Kane, and again, it's going to be the whole thing, isn't Put it? Put your money where your mouth is, you think he's a, <laughs> you think he's a jammy pick at yeah, your top points pick for the week? I can't see that Kane's going to go back to back like he's such a frustrating player, Kane, because he's got two goals and he'll probably blank the next game, right? I just... No, he's not going to blank at home to Brighton. And then Brighton have just lost to Huddersfield two 0 which you just think, how oh, have they lost to Huddersfield two 0 So, don't know. Let's say yes. Let's say yes. You're Salah, captain Salah, Salah captain, Excellent. and you'll I go love Kane. Differential captain because choice. I'm our, going Kane. Our teams are getting far too similar. We need because to. You keep copying me. <laughs> so oh, you got Ruben off to cheat the other week. So unbelievable. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm going to stop telling him what I'm doing. It's because like, of these videos. We know what each other's doing. So you just. You, you sat here on Friday night and you said, <laughs> "What are your chances?" I've done Ramsey. Ten minutes later, have you done a transfer? Yeah, I've just done Ramsey. What? 
was already thinking Rams. I was thinking Lacazette, by the way, this week. Oh, there's a one-week punt for Jesus. That would have been terrible, wouldn't it? That would well, have been terrible. On that bombshell. All right, so when's, when's our next video? So we've got, uh, well, obviously, when, Tuesday, Wednesday fixtures. Well, I don't we've know. You're out, a, you're out and about on Christmas do this week. Oh, so it's Christmas do central, isn't it? And also the snow is going to... Well, the snow might actually hamper some of that Christmas do Ness, because we've well, had an absolute so. So ton of see. snow today um, so in the snow. UK down near London. So oh, the snowman's lost his head, though. He's lost his head. Oh dear, <laughs> let's, let's call him Dejan Lovren. Out the window, he's lost his head. <laughs> Dejan Lovren, the snowman. Right, um, that's so, it. I, I think. think we'll try and come Wednesday. Wednesday, stroke Thursday yeah. for a preview for game week seventeen. Right? No, eighteen. Because we're going to have game week seventeen in the week. Oh, it's too thick and fast for me. This I can't yeah. keep up. I can't keep up. Pictures. Spurs and Man City. Spurs, Man City. Good one to look forward to. Right, on that note, it's good night from me. And me. Take Cheers, care, guys. guys. Bye, Bye now.